Hey guys, it's time for us to continue our work with the so-called Bhagwajang class notes. This time it's already the 25th episode. So let's dive straight into it. If you haven't watched any of the previous Bhagwajang class notes and you enter uh, into this series just now, um, this video shows a little bit of our uh, regular warm-up. We always change it a little bit, but to me it's important that we always start with joint rotations, that, that we try to move each major joint from the feet up to the head through the full range of motion at least once before we, um, before we continue our practice, or especially when we want to continue with partner practice. So it's a check-in with your body every time. It's uh, very good that you take well, more or less the same routine uh, for quite some time so you actually understand the, the subtle uh, nuances of every joint that you want to move through and also that you notice when something's different on any given day so you can adapt and change your planned workout uh, in order to do the best for your body at this particular day. Okay, so after starting from the toes, the ankle joint, the knees, now we go to the hips and this whole class uh, here on Tuesday was basically again, like last week, about the alignment of your upper body and specifically about the alignment of your shoulder girdle. Okay, so we talked uh, a lot about internal cues last week and we will talk about this again in this session here. So now you see that I move my spine through rotation. I let my arms just hang and swing from one side to side. You also will notice that I double speeded the video just because to keep it in a time frame which is still acceptable for the viewer and also for myself. Okay, so now we start with the more important stuff. So after we moved every joint from the toe down upward, upstream through the spine, now it's time to move to the furthest point upstream of your spine. So we start with head circles. Okay, so I take the my own nose and I try to draw a circle in front of me and I try to draw that circle as big as possible and as smooth as possible. Okay, And whenever I notice there's a sticky point, I might reduce the speed and breathe in, breathe out, try to relax this uh, particular part of the motion and uh, integrate it back into a more uh, fluid and more, well, uh, effortless way of moving the head in this case. Okay, so this is still uh, the head circles, but I already changed to circles here that I draw from the crown of my head, the Baihui point, just on top of your head. When you move with your finger from the tip of your ear, you move up your head and just in the middle of your skull, this is the Baihui point, the crown of your head. And now we draw the circle at the ceiling. Okay, from the from the top of our head, from from Baihui, we do it both directions. We draw it as big as possible, and uh, that's basically it. And the rest of the body, you just hold it still, so you are only focused on this part of your spine. Okay, so the this is this is the start of the work we will do today, um, because later or just now after that, we want to move our attention further down into the thoracic spine. And now we try to, oops, sorry, uh, we try to also move the spine from our chest here upwards. Okay, so you see that now I am moving from this line. I try to hold the rest of the body, like the lower, uh, the lower body, the lower back, as well as the lumbar spine. I try to keep it stable and I only want to move my thoracic spine in this exercise. This ain't easy if you have to manage to stabilize your upper body, but it's worth uh, exploring, okay? So do the same circles with your head, but now you also integrate the thoracic spine into your movement. And the last step would be that we take a little wider stance, we put our hands on our hips, and now we try to move the whole spine, spine from the um, from the furthest point downstream up to Bai Hui, we want now to extend our spine as much as possible and to circle it around. Okay, so your whole spine now needs to stretch and extend and also move in a circular fashion 
through rotation, side bending, extension and flexion. So this is the uh, final exercise here that we did for joint rotations without integrating any arm movement. Okay, so I suggest you take your time with those. You know, I, I double speeded the whole video just to make it quick so you can take a look at it and then you, when you practice it by yourself, take your time, do everything that I just showed for five to 10 minutes and really get a nice feeling for what you are actually moving and which parts are not moving and which ones should move and which ones shouldn't move. Okay, so that's my, uh, my take on these exercises for now and in this particular class. Now I also integrated a nice arm swing so this is basically still extending the spine and lengthen it as much as possible. But I also integrate a nice arm pattern here for the arm swings because we also practiced Ho Tian number 1.5, which is Li Zhang in the later parts of this session. I didn't film it. I think I will film it next week. So if you're interested in that and the applications for Li Zhang, stay tuned until next week. But for now, we just took the hand or the arm pattern from Li Zhang and put it on top of the already existing pattern of lengthening, extending the spine. Now, I said it before, those exercises were basically meant to solo focus on your spinal movement. But now we want to add our arms to the game. So the next exercise here looks very, very simple. It's basically only an external rotation with your arm and an extension sideways. First, we just extend downwards into a well, around 45 degree angle, just like so. And let me tell you one thing. There's many, many things from internal martial arts that have been taken out of internal martial arts and have been solo promoted as something very amazing. Okay, so let's just say hyper arc training. That's the next shit. Let's just say breathing methods. All in internal martial arts already. Okay, let's just say fascial training. This is just what you see right now. Look, I externally rotate my hands. I extend sideways into a 45 degree angles, into a 45 degree angle, and then I just stretch and I open my chest. I open the whole area of my lungs and I extend and stretch my fascia. Okay? So this could easily be taken out of the context and could be marketed in a very smart way because this is such an amazing way of exercising your body. It's just unbelievable, really. Do this exercise and just, just that, okay? If you take one thing out of this video, take this exercise here and do it for 20 minutes straight. And just let me know how your arms and shoulders felt afterwards. Just as we did in the previous spinal movement section, we now use the external rotation in our arms and the extension of our arms. But while we were holding our body more or less stiff in the first version, we now, just as we did before, want to integrate movement of our thoracic spine into the game. Okay, so now I'm externally rotating, I, am in, I inhale, and I also want to extend my thoracic spine, my whole chest. And the next level, again, just as we did before, will be to integrate the whole spine, the whole center line in front of your body into the pattern. You breathe out, you lean forward, you extend the whole line of your, of your back to Baihui. And then when you inhale and externally rotate your arms and stretch your arms away, you also want to fully extend and stretch your spine from the lumbar spine up towards Bai Hui. That's a full body stretch, opening the hip flexors here. And then with the exhalation, you just lean forward into a nice relaxed stance and internally rotate your hands. Again, this is something you could do in a warm up for just two minutes, or you take your time and really do that for 15, 20 minutes. It's a really, really, really amazing exercise. And I can only recommend you just take the time at least once and give it a try and tell me 
how you felt afterwards. Okay, so, but now that's where we actually wanted to go from the beginning. Now we go to a posture, which is practiced as a standing posture in a couple of Qigong systems, but also in Bagua Zhang and circle walking. And this posture is called Piao Mu Zhang. So it means driftwood palm. Okay, the idea here is again, that you extend your arms sideways, that you externally rotate your hands. And now we use all the three cues that we used in the last session when we talked about shoulder cues. In this exercise again, we want to sink our elbows. We want to expand our arms and our shoulders horizontally to the side. And we also want to engage the latissimus here on my back in order to pull the the shoulders down into their socket as much as possible so we actually can release tension here in the neck and in the trapeze muscle okay so those internal cues those three we talked about them in the last session class notes number 24 and now we use those same cues again for this piao Zhang, the driftwood palm exercise so inhale open and extend externally rotate your thumb or your hand and now move into this Piao Mu Zhang uh, posture. Now the interesting thing about this is that we really want to learn how to uphold our hands like so for the longest possible duration and what usually happens is that a lot of tension creeps up somewhere in your arms, in your shoulders, in your trapeze, in your neck, in your lower spine. It creeps up wherever you have the most um, most tension in your body anyway okay so the the goal here is that you want to release this tension even if it's just one percent but you use this exercise in order to release this upcoming tension first become aware of it and then try to let go of it without moving too much okay you can always move a little and wiggle yourself a little bit out of the of, out of the tension but try to move not that much make it a more mental game to use the correct internal cues in order to reduce the tension that you hold in your neck and upper body. And one important thing, one important internal cue already is, uh, is um, written in the name of the exercise, Piao Zhang, the driftwood palm. The image here is not that you are actually actively lifting your hands upwards, because if you do, if you imagine to lift something up, you will almost automatically tense up in your shoulders but the idea is that your hands are floating on water and that the water is actually lifting up your hands and this is something that helps a ton in order to reduce tension in your shoulder girdle just give that a try of course it doesn't come today when this is your first practice session it takes well it takes a while and again, I would suggest you stay with these exercises for a period of at least four, but better, six weeks and see if you can create any changes um, in your body. Okay, so that's the exercise of um, how to get into Piao Mu Zhang, the driftwood palm posture. And now we also want to take a step forward because we want to take this standing posture into the circle walking exercise into the circle walking practice. And here we see another very, very important point that shouldn't be neglected, which is the posterior tilt of your hips. This is absolutely crucial in this exercise because you can avoid the whole thing completely if you keep your back extended. Uh, you won't feel anything in this exercise. So very important here is the posterior tilt. This one here, I tuck my my tailbone in okay uh, don't do that to the extreme you don't want to tense up in your hip flexor area basically for the most people it means you just posterior tilt your hip to the level that you don't feel any excess tension in your lower back but you also still don't feel any excess tension creeping in your hip flexor area okay your, your hip should feel neutral but if you do not tuck your tailbone here if you do not posterior tilt your hip you will not feel the same stretch in your arms and the extension of your shoulder in the Piao Mu Zhang the driftwood palm uh, posture so absolutely important absolutely crucial here if you overextend your back this whole thing here is completely uh, shut down you will not have a nice stretch in your forearms in your in your um, 
upper arms you won't feel the opening of the of the chest you won't feel the extension sideways of your shoulders as long as you have an overextended back it's almost it's it's not there but as soon as you really tilt your uh, your hip your posterior tilt you will feel immediately how that changes the whole um, the whole stretch and the whole posture becomes so much stronger okay let's see here I'm just demonstrating it's super important posterior tilt and again lengthen the spine and this is the posture you want to find and you want to find a nice stretch sensation from your index finger basically through the inside of your forearm here and then all the way into your shoulder girdle so this is how you do it absolutely not forget the posterior tilt in this exercise all right so this is how you move into it yes and then well we did um some circle walking we practiced our forms and the main goal here even if you did not learn any of our Yizong Bagua palm changes here if you just know how to walk the circle a little bit that's fine the the goal of this uh, this day's practice here was that we still use the cues for our shoulders so that again we want to sink the elbows we want to extend and expand our shoulders sideways so we have this open shoulder image we want to open our shoulder blades at the back so our back is strong and uh, we also want to at least mentally engage the latissimus in order to pull our shoulders down so we can relax the neck area a little better okay so i just demonstrate this here with the single palm change and really basic circle walking note that i want to keep my arms elongated long in a very strong uh, structure so that's that's regular circle walking here again watch out for those three cues that we talked about in the last class notes episode sink your elbows open your shoulder blades and use your latissimus in order to pull the shoulders down into the socket okay and a little further on we uh, practice the piao mutang posture in circle walking and here we just started this week so it's only five minutes of continuously walking the circle with the piao mutang posture important here is that when you want to turn into the other direction you basically have no rest in your arms because when you do so and you go in with your outside foot like I do here all you all you do is that you internally rotate your hands like a big eagle flying and you know what eagles do and then immediately externally rotate the hands again find the piao mujang posture and walk into the other direction so if you take five minutes and you really want to keep your arms up try to use all the internal cues that we've talked about sink the elbows expand your shoulders at least in mentally note that your lats are pulling down your shoulders and relaxing the neck muscles here and super important for this exercise especially on top of those three cues make sure that you try to use the image of wood supporting your hands instead of the idea of i need to lift my hands or i need to hold up my hands no the water is supporting your hands and it helps you to hold up your hands so this is it this was class notes number 25 next week we will dive back into applications of the swallow palm change as well as applications and form practice of Li Zhang line 1.5 let me know if you like this session and speak soon